and welcome to Chair Interval Training, brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center, and me, Lynn Hardman, Silver Sneakers Instructor. You don't need silver sneakers to do this approximately 60 minute gentle but very effective exercise program. You do need a sturdy chair and if you have them on hand, a rubber ball or a, and a rubber band today. If you don't have those, no worries, but you can always call me. I'm in the red book and I'll hook you up with some materials until we can safely meet again in person. But that's gonna be a while, so let's stay strong and safe at home, shall we? Oh, and before we do this exercise program or any new exercise program, it's best you consult your doctor. If you feel dizzy or out of balance at any time, it's best you remain or return to your sturdy chair. So let's get started. If you're curious, we use music because it motivates us. Science has studied all kinds of exercise and this, this is exercise that is efficacious for your energized, efficient, lower your risk of falls self, okay? So do your best and then if anything hurts, sudden sharp shooting kind of a pain, just back off, reduce the range of motion, or substitute your last movement that felt good to you, or just do your best and then rest. Okay, we're gonna use music that's about 128 beats per minute. That will be close to the heart rate that you'll achieve. Ah, but it's really hard to keep track of our heart rate. So we are gonna keep track of our exertion with a chart from one being the lowest intensity to 10. And we're gonna shoot for a medium of about a four to a seven. And if you were able to take your heart rate or you wore a Fitbit or something that monitors your heart rate, you might find that your heart rate's the same as the music beat, if you're curious. I think it's good to be curious. My cat is here again with us. She does not seem so curious. <laughs> Okay, let's get started. We're gonna warm up gradually and then we'll do the stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. And we are gonna do some fighting today. <laughs> Exercise program. Just see how it feels to, whether you're seated or standing, to just start marching it out. Best posture makes our movement easier, so do your best. Sit up tall or stand up tall, elongating your spine with your ears directly over your shoulders and your shoulders over your hips. Swinging those arms in oppositional fashion to your feet is good. It's a great way to start better connecting your brain with your body. And that lowers our risk of falls because it better coordinates us. Okay. Marching feels good. Let's march our stance out a little wider and see how it feels to sink down and push up one ball of the foot and then the other. Sinking down into our hips, knees, and ankles. And then lifting one shoulder toward the ear, if that feels good. Take it back in a little circle. Ah, ease into your movements gradually. The warm up is the most important part of this exercise program or any exercise program. You can make those shoulder circles bigger right into your elbow or your whole arm if it feels good to you. Let's see how it feels to open and close chest and shoulders. Breathe in at your own pace. Feel free to move at your own pace. Sometimes we'll play around with tempo and do some things slow and then faster. If you find that a certain speed doesn't suit you today, you're right. Go at your own pace. Let's see how it feels to reach across the body and rotate through the torso a little bit. As you do that, sink down into your hips, knees, and ankles or that mini squat. and squeeze your glutes. That's your butt. <laughs> We're gonna do a little bit of rotation. 
with one of our patterns today, and I want to preview a pattern that we've never done before. We're going to do a little bit of kickboxing, but don't let that scare you. I know most of us here in our peaceful little village aren't fighters, but I want you to get your game face on, think like a warrior, and we're going to pretend to fight this virus. Sidle it to the right side of your chair. Get your right foot a little bit ahead of your left. I'm sorry, your left a little bit ahead of your right. And sink down into your triple flexion in this split stance or a little bit of a lunge or a staggered stance. We're going to punch with this right hand across the body. Huh. You can use your chair to steady yourself. Then we're going to kick that left foot just one time. So you gotta rock your way back as you get that front foot. Let's try that to a rhythm. Three punches, two, three, one kick, three punches, one kick, three punches, breathe. That's it, three and one. We can do this at tempo. We can do it a little faster. Tight, 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 kick, one, two, three, kick. Punch, two, three. You get it? Well, we're just warming up, but we can do that in different directions. And then we can play around with a speed bag and some foot patterns, and we're gonna fight this virus together. <laughs> but I have another pattern that we're gonna work on, so I wanna show that to you. I'm gonna come out front, but at all times, I need you to be within eye and hands width of your chair so you can use it as your balance check. But I want you to look at my feet. We're going to do just a simple little march, two, three, lift. But we're going to count up. We're going to lift once on both sides, then we're going to do twice, then three, then four. Simple, but maybe not easy. So here's what it sounds like, march, two, three, lift. Lift, march, two, three, lift. Now we're gonna lift two times, two. And then we're gonna lift this one two times. Now march, two, three, lift three times, two. One. And then the other side, three times. We're balancing. Now four times. And we're gonna just keep going up like that. Other side, lift, three, two, one. Get the picture? And we'll lift in different ways. You might find, especially if you're seated, the tops of your thighs get a little tired. So I want you to pay attention to your body. If something doesn't feel right, again, you're right. You can change it up. We are about to change it up. We're gonna sit and do some dynamic stretching. So keep your chin up as you touch the chair physically with your heels or your lower legs. That way you know as you get seated, which is a squat, hips go back, head stays up. If you lose your balance, whoa, you're right where you need to be safely in your seat. Also, it's when you're in your seat, it's a good time to get a sip of water. And as you do, you want to step to the side, lean to the side, brace with your abdominals and your arm. By leaning to the side, lateral flexion is a little bit gentler on the lower back than hinging forward. That's hard on the low back. Okay, let me make sure I push the right button. Sometimes I unintentionally shuffle these songs around. Whenever you're getting anything down low, that's a good step to the side, lean to the side system to protect your spine. Now, sitting tall, ears over shoulders, over hips. Just get comfy, feel free to adjust, bring those shoulders up, back, and settle them down in your back pockets and stretch out your right leg, stretch out your left leg. See how it feels to point your toe, stretching that front of your ankle, pointing your toe and squeezing these long, strong quadricep muscles. And try the opposite arm, reaching. Hold the navel in, breathe. You've got this. We're going nice and slow. So we can limber up the ankle and the wrist with a little point flex point. Right and left. I'm so glad you're working out at home, 
doing your best. You can access these programs anytime you want to over YouTube at the Community Access Yellow Springs channel. Excellent. Now let's do one more and then settle that right heel on the ground. Support with our abdominals and our hand on our left butt with a long, strong spine. Hinge forward for a little stretch, not too much. Keep that chin up. Figuratively and literally. Lift the toes and the fingers and wave hello side to side. Nice and easy. Good. Exhale as you pull that navel in and lean back, drawing the knee toward the shoulder and circling the ankle one direction and then the other. And actually, don't worry too much about whether you inhale, exhale on certain moves. Let's stretch that left leg out. Just don't hold your breath and breathe at your own pace. Your body knows how to, well, you know how to be in your body. You've been in it for a while now. <laughs> Lift the toes and the fingers, spreading those toes in your shoes and your fingers too. And then wave them gently, just as far as they want to go, perhaps rotating a little through the knee and the hip, the wrist and the elbow, even a little through the shoulder. And sit tall, pull the navel in like you're zipping up tight trousers. Draw the knee a little closer to your chest, if that feels good. You can rotate your ankle with your heel on the floor if it doesn't feel good to flex your hip this far. Opposite directions with your ankle circles. Ankles are very key to our balance. Okay, let's get warmed up a little bit more in those ankle joints. Rest the heels of your hands on their lap and the heels bouncing off of the floor. Good. Bounce the heels of your hands off the lap. And let those hands come up in the air and let your elbows and your heels go out and in. Warming up the shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles. Good. Walk your heels, toes out. Get a little stretch here. Knees and toes like to go the same direction as we gently stretch the inner thighs to get ready for fight time. We're going to do our little punch, two, three, kick pattern and so much more. But let's first take a nice deep breath and check on our exertion level. On a scale of one being the lowest intensity and ten being I can't even move or breathe anymore, where are you now? Remember, during this next 10 minute or so segment, we want to try to achieve a four to a seven. Whether we're seated and punching or standing, you know where you want to be and don't hesitate to return to your chair if you'd like. So we'll start out here on the right side. We're going to have our right leg a little bit ahead of our left. Switch that. We're going to have our left leg a little bit ahead of our right. We've got our left hand near our chair, so we're sinking down into our slightly athletic stance, and we're going to punch slow three times, and then kick. Ready? Punch, 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 kick. Now, when you're punching, you're pulling your navel in, and you're breathing. You've got that chair there. We're sinking down, and we're squeezing up that glute on that rear leg, that right leg. Come on. Maybe you'd like to battle the winter blues. Fight cabin fever. Boom. Three, two, one, kick. If your balance is good, you can put your block up. We're gonna do two more at tempo. Now we're gonna go fast if you choose. Are you ready? Let's fight. Three, two, one, kick. Three, two, one. You don't have to kick high, but kick strong. Got your chair, kick, two more at speed, excellent, march it out, how you doing? Let's try that over on the left side. For most of you who are righties, it might feel a little funny. 
okay? So we're gonna sit back here. We've got our right hand on our chair. And we're gonna punch with our left. One, two, three, kick, punch, two, three, and when you're kicking, you're balancing momentarily on that rear leg. So keep your hand near that chair or right on it. Hold the navel in, you've got this. If your balance is good, you can bring up your other arm. Breathe. You got this. Two more at tempo. One more, and then if you choose, we can go fast. Ready? Here we go. Punch, two, three, kick. Punch, two, three, kick. You got your chair if you need it. Whoa, this is good. I'm getting warm. It's really cold outside as we take this today. How about two more? With speed. Woo! March it out. How are you doing on our one to ten intensity scale? Happy medium? Maybe a four? I feel great, let's keep fighting. <laughs> Maybe an eight, I gotta slow down a little bit, make it smaller. Come to the, directly behind your chair and we're gonna play around with a foot pattern and arm pattern. We're gonna pretend we've got one of those speed bags that people punch like this. You can be down low, or just a bit above your eye level, whatever works for your shoulders. But let's get our feet right, we're gonna step out to the right to the left, wide, and then narrow. A little faster, so out, out, in, in, and keep this cadence with your feet. We're gonna work on our coordination. We're gonna use our right hand and hit that speed bag. Boom, boom, boom. Now, it is a speed bag, so if you want, we can move our feet and our hand double time. Out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in. You can use both hands if, if you don't need the, the chair for balance. Four, three, come on now. Two, getting our heart rate up. One, so good for us. Woo. You ready to do another round? We got to fight. <laughs> All right. Over here on the right side, this time we're gonna use a little jab. That first punch we did was a cross. A jab out to the right side. So get your feet square, make sure that your left hand can touch the chair. Sink down into a mini squat. And just look off to the right. We're gonna punch, two, three, and then kick, punch, two, three, kick. You don't have to kick high, but kick strong. Get down into your mini squat. Got your chair if you need it. But if you don't, you can bring that other hand up. How are you doing? Three, two, one. One more at tempo. And if you like, we can go faster. Keep it tight now. Punch, 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 kick, punch, punch, punch. Stay low. How you doing? Punch, 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 kick. Two more like this at speed. Woo, march it out. If you like, we're gonna do the other side. So square up with your chair, make sure you can touch it. Nice wide stance for stability. Dipping down into our mini squat for strength in our hips and thighs. Look off to the left and jab. Two, three, kick, jab, two, three, breathe, but brace your abdominals as if someone were gonna punch you, but they're not. Punch, punch, punch. Got your chair there. Two more at tempo. Fast now, punch, two, three, kick, punch, two, three, kick. Got your chair if you need it. Hey, hey, punch, two, three, kick. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm liking it a little too much. Two more at speed. <laughs> Woo, march it out. Bring your body to the back of your chair. How are you doing with your intensity? Able to breathe, able to talk? 
We're going to do that out, out, in, in footwork with our left. Right. In, narrow. Now, at tempo. Out, out, in, in. Keep those feet going. Imagine that speed bag. And we're going to use our left hand this time at tempo, round and round. You can use both hands if you don't need your balance check with the chair. Keep that going. Four more at tempo. Three, two, you ready? Double time, hands and feet. Out, 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 out. This is a good one. Four, three, do your best. Two, one, relax. All right, we got one more direction we can kick. If we're careful, come on over to the right side of your chair. Make sure you can touch with your left hand. We're gonna sink down low, and this time we're gonna throw an elbow back which would be a good defense, self-defense technique if someone were grabbing you from behind. We're gonna do three elbows back, then we're gonna push that left foot back. Right elbow three times, push. And then kick back, left. Right elbow back, kick left, right. Right. Kick. Low but strong. Kick. Two more at tempo. Kick. Hold the navel in, and if you want, double time. Elbow jab. Kick. One, two, three. Kick. Jab, jab, jab. Stay low. Do your best. Keep it small but tight. Small but strong. Two more at speed if you like. Woo! I'm getting hot. Well, we gotta try and finish off on the left side. Then we're gonna slow down and change our focus to strength. But first, let's get into our athletic stance. Able to touch that chair. Left elbow. Belly tight, jab it three times. Right foot kicks back or stomps. Two more at tempo. Three, two, one. Stomp and one more at tempo. If you like, pass now. Jab, two, three, kick. Jab, two, three, kick. Keep your balance. Stay low. Two more at speed. Woo! That was a good little 10 minutes. You better catch our breath. Check our intensity on the one to 10 scale and slow our heart rate down with a little bit of stretching before we sit down for our strength. So we're over here on the left. If you want, walk that left foot back a bit and we'll get a calf stretch. Ah, pace the heel on the ground. Nice, long, strong line from your rear left heel all the way up to your left fingertips. Remember if the shoulder hurts, just bring it in, shorten the lever. And other side. Gradually walk the right foot back to a place where you can keep the heel pasted on the ground and lean forward to lengthen those calf muscles that work so hard whenever we're doing any kind of walking or on our feet, continual rhythmic aerobic activity. Even biking, our calves work very hard. All right, let's strengthen some other muscles. Number one, our thighs and our hips with our squat. So line your heels up, nice snugly touching the chair. Keep your head up as if there's an imaginary glass of water on there. Hinge your hips back, hover a bit, and then push up and draw your hips forward as you do that. Hips go back as you lower into your strengthening squat and hips come forward with a little power. How many times? You get to decide. Try not to let your knees drift in toward one another. And when you're ready, have a seat. Step to the side, lean to the side, support for your water. All 
All right. We are going, I'm going to turn this down a teensy bit. We're going to use both of our tools today at the same time. So see if you can get situated. Just laying that two on your lap. And let's get the ball supporting with our left hand. Let's get the ball under our right foot. We don't want to bend too far forward. Put it under that right foot, not under the arch area or the heel. And hold on to your chair. You should be seated near the edge, the front edge of your chair. And drive as much as you can with strength into that ball, pushing it, breathing. Each time you squeeze air out of the ball, that's a good time to exhale. Tighten your belly, tighten your bottom. You can feel your hamstrings strengthening on this right leg as, it, as you do the leg press. You can feel your hips. You have to think about it to get the most out of it, okay? Now, we're gonna combine an upper body one-armed row with this leg press. So let's take a break, holding the rubber tubing as a U shape. Just lasso the bottom of your right foot and take both ends of your band over to your right hand. You could just stick your hand through these little triangles and grab, or just grab the band somewhere where there's a little bit of tension, like a bass fiddle already. We don't want slack in our tube. Now, we're gonna support, leaning forward halfway toward our lap, supporting with our left arm, and strong abdominals, we're gonna pull, row. Try to keep the tension on your tube. If you need to adjust it, holding it closer to the foot makes it harder. Holding it a little further up towards the shoulder makes it easier. Now, combine your leg press with your one arm row. Pressing into the ball as you row, breathing each time. Strengthening the upper back, rear deltoids, those are the shoulders, and the bicep with the row, and we're strengthening the hips and the thighs with that stomp. Good, relax. Release the tension on that, and let's do the other side. Situate your ball first under the left foot. Hold on to your chair if you need while you it feels a bit unstable when you do this leg press. That's okay. It, in, it actually recruits your abdominals when you feel that little wobbliness. Exhale as you squeeze the air out of the ball. Do your best. You get out of this what you put into it, but don't hold your breath. When you're ready to take a break, we're gonna grab our band and situate it middle of the band under the left sole close to the ball and then take both sides of the band over to the left you can slide your arm through and grab that tube or you could just grab the tube i just don't like the parts hitting the floor strong abdominals supporting your long strong back as you hinge halfway forward and pull Think of squeezing your shoulder blades together behind you as you row. Shh. Inhale or exhale during either part of this movement. Just don't hold your breath. And if you like, add back in your leg press as you row. I'm getting nice and warm on this cold day. When you see this, this episode will air early February. So as I am recording it, it's pretty cold outside. So this exercise is a nice way to warm up. Excellent. Relax. Release the tension before you get that tube off. And we're going to take our time to take that ball off to one side and lean to the side, supporting to get it up and in between our thighs. We're gonna do a little inner thigh squeeze at the edge of our seat, please. And then we're gonna add on some other work. All right, dig your heels down into the ground. 
pull your toes up and you're going to add some more hamstrings and shin strengthening to the most obvious uh, major muscle group that's being strengthened here, our inner thighs. Remember to breathe each time you squeeze the air out of the ball. All right, we already did a bunch of pulling with our rows. Let's strengthen the opposing muscles, the front of the chest and the shoulders. So take a break with the ball, keeping it between your thighs. And we're gonna take the tubing behind our upper back, underneath the shoulders and coming out under the armpits. And then we're gonna try a chest press. Now, I am not getting any resistance or tension, so I'm going to grab the tube closer to the shoulder joint. And you're encouraged to pick your favorite challenging amount of resistance. As you push, it's best to exhale. As you reach your shoulders back, inhale. Or vice versa, just don't hold your breath. And if you like, add that thigh squeeze. Every time you press your arms straight and open your chest to bent arms. I see a lot of people do this with straight arms, and that's okay, but every time you bend your elbow, you're employing the tricep muscles, the, the muscles on the back of the upper arm. You want to get those strong as well. Are you digging your heels in, getting the most out of that? Ball squeeze. Are you pulling your toes up? If so, we're about done. If you want, let's finish with a little pulse. Inhale like you're smelling your favorite aroma. Exhale as if you're blowing out a little candle. Awesome. Okay, well, we got a lot of pulling and pushing and squeezing and pressing. We're going to hang up the band for now and the ball. Get a little sip of water if you choose to, and then we're gonna work on another aerobic routine. These intervals are really an effective way to get a total body workout and staying at your best pace. Okay, so whether you're seated or standing, we're gonna use this pattern. March, two, three, lift, one time each side, and then march, two, three, lift, two times per side. And then march, two, three, lift, three times per side. Get it? Good. And then we're gonna go up and up and up all the way to eight. Unless you don't want to. So whether you're in your seat or you're on your feet, you get to determine what works best for you today. Let's start over here on the left side. Make sure you can see and touch your chair. Nothing's under your feet. The ball may have squirted out or what, whatnot. Best posture, we're gonna start with knees. March two, three, lift. March two, three, lift. Now two knees, lift twice. Lift twice. Now three knees, lift two, three. Now we're balancing a little longer. So you gotta stay close enough, lift four times, four. Three, two, one, march, two, three, four, three, two, one. Now we're gonna lift five times. Five, four, three, keep your head tall. And march, two, three, five, four, three, two, one. Lift six times. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Lift six, five, four, Three, two, one. How many this time? Seven, six. Count down with me. Five, four, three, two, and other side. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Last time. Eight here. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. You can use your chair. Two, one. March, two, three. Last eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Woo, I felt that here. How about you? Do they get your heart rate elevated a little bit? Remember, you can always add some arms overhead and still use this other arm. So for instance, when we were doing those 
you could pull and that would add to your heart rate if you feel like you want to get a little more out of that okay let's come behind our chair and try this same pattern march two three lift this time we're going to use a little hamstring curl i want to show you something so you stay behind your chair when you're doing these hamstring curls it's best to have your feet a little bit wide starting your little uh, down stance to keep your foot dorsiflexed and your knee down instead of bringing it forward and then you'll use more of the rear muscles and that's the intent here so nice wideish stance a little bit low behind your chair and a march two three lift now march two three two lifts lift lift march two three lift Lift, march, two, three, three, two, one, you got it. Three, two, one, add some arms if you like. Four lifts, three, two, one, march, two, three, four, three, two, one. Now five, five, four, three, two, and other side. Five, four, three, two, Good, up to sixes, six, five, four, three, two, one. Other side, count with me, six, five, four, three, two, one. Up to seven, we can do it. Head and chest tall, boy, oh, I forgot to count. March two, three, seven, six. I apologize if I didn't do that right before. Three, two, eight each side. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One more side. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Woo! How are you doing on our scale of one to ten? I know that's a lot of numbers. Are you getting closer to that target zone of a four to seven? If you're speaking with me, I bet you do because that uses a little bit of our oxygen. We're gonna try this same pattern again. Whether you're seated or, or standing, best posture on the right side. This time we're gonna tap our toe out front, okay? So when, whenever we tap, I want you to sink down into your legs. So just like that, all right? Try not to lean too far to the side. March two, three, tap. March, two, three, tap, one time. Now, march, two, three, tap, twice. March, two, three, tap, twice. March, two, three, three taps. Two, one, try not to step on it, just tap it. Three, two, one, march, and four taps. Three, two, one, four taps, four, three, two, one, five taps. Five, reach it out, four, three, two, one. It's if you're just testing the icy cold water with your toe. Now six, six, five, four, three, two, one, and other side. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Can we do seven? Seven, six, my legs are getting tired. How are yours? Four. Three, two, one, march, two, three, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last set, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, last, last set of eight on the other leg, four more, three, two, one, wow, that, Going up and down on one leg is a one-legged squat. Really good for strengthening your hips and your thighs while you improve your balance. By the way, strength and balance are one and the same. The more your, good, your strength is improved, the better your balance will be. Okay, so they're not one and the same, but they're reliant on each other. All right, one more time. This is gonna be hard, because we're gonna use these long, hip abduction moves, keeping our foot dorsiflexed. Behind our chair in a nice lowish, athletic, wideish stance. And we'll do it, march two, three, lift. Are you ready? Let's go. March two, three, lift. 
other side. Now we'll lift two times. Two, one, two, one. March two, three, lift three. Two, one, march down low, lift three. Two, one, march two, three, lift four. Three, two, how are you doing? Four, three, two, one. Now, march two, three, lift five. Four, three, up and down. Two, one, march two, three, five. Pull the navel in. Now, lift six. Six, five, four, three, do your best, two. And then you can rest if you like. Six, five, four, Three, two, one. Can we do another set? Seven, six, five, four, three, ooh, two, one. Other side. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to skip eight because my, my hips are feeling it. Are you still going? Well, good for you. <laughs> March it out. Catch your breath. Ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, how did that feel for you aerobically? How are your lungs and your heart rate? We're gonna stretch the hips, if you choose, before we sit down again and do work, do our, do our strength work. With a straight knee, but not locked, we can gently push into that hip and lengthen our side of our torso as well. I'm going to come over to the other side and do the other hip. So most of my weight is in this right leg. The leg is straight. And I push gently to lengthen those side hip muscles. And then reaching and stretching. Ah, that felt good. All right, we're going to do another interval of strength. And we're going to use both of our tools again. So bring your body to the front of your chair. If you want, let's try eight squats. You can go down on the count of three and up on one, or you can just get seated, but do your best, touching the chair with your legs. Here we go, down. Down, two, three. Squeeze those hips forward as you come up. That's our second squat. That was our third. Down, two, three, four. Down, two, Three, five, down, do your best. Six, down, two, three, seven, last one, eight. And actually, we're going to do almost another squat to get seated. Bravo. I'm thirsty. Even if you're not thirsty, it's a good time to step to the side, support your spine, lean to the side, get another sip of water. We're gonna work on lower back. You have to think about this. Back extensions are strengthening for your lower back and your butt and your thighs. So, let me look at my little sheet here, low pelvic tilts. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, this is a good one, I like this one. We're gonna need our band and our ball. For now, just double up your band and lay it on your lap or Somehow, we're going to take the ball and put it in the low curve of the back and scooch well back in our chair. Take your time. Work on our breathing. Each time we inhale, I want you to let that lower back arch a bit and release the pressure on the ball. And each time we exhale, I want you to push the lower back into the ball, push your heels into the floor, squeeze your glutes. So inhale, let the lower back arch gently away from the ball. Exhale, tighten your tummy, tighten your tush, dig your heels in, go at your own pace. So we're doing a pelvic tilt and we're pushing a hyperextension into that ball with our lower back. Don't let the chair legs lift off of the floor or tilt. Dig your heels in, breathe. Don't hold your breath. If you're doing this with a lot of intention and connection of your mind with your body, this is a pretty good exercise. So 
As you exhale, tighten your abdominals like someone's going to pop you in the belly. Tighten your glutes, tighten your hamstrings by digging those heels in. Good. All right. Now, we're going to add a seated row. With the band doubled up, you're going to get double the tension. You could do just one part of it, but we're going to hold knuckles forward, wrists straight. But we're going to stretch the band apart and pull it towards our chest, squeezing the shoulder blades together behind us. So forward, keep that line straight, back, squeeze a line between your shoulder blades, or a lemon. This is strengthening our upper back over your shoulders. Now, add very carefully your ball squeezing pelvic tilt. Take those heels in. I think I'm starting to sweat. This is a whole body exercise. Tighten up your abdominals as you exhale. Squeeze the air out of the ball behind you. I'm going to do just two more because I'm running out of energy in my upper body especially. Whew. That's hard. All right, let's switch it up just a little. We're going to keep the pressure on that ball behind us and take the band under our feet, equal length on either side. Just bring the handles together or if you've got a, a flat band, you can just grab it with one hand. We're going to use the other hand to lift the ball up a little bit closer to the shoulder blades, depending on the height of your chair back and your your torso and limb lengths. Keep the chair, all four legs on the ground and push. See how that feels. Okay, good. All right, let's crisscross these bands. And if you like, paste the elbows to your rib cage as you push, dig your heels into the floor. Squeeze your glutes and you can do a little bicep curl. Keep the elbows pasted to your rib cage or the side of your body. Don't let the shoulders hunch. Strengthening the biceps, the front of the upper arm. And if you like, we can add a little step to the side as we push into the ball. And then the other side. Strengthening the outsides of the hips. Woo! This is an all body exercise. Breathing each time. All right. Relax, we're gonna do one more exercise. But just let that ball go down and scooch, walk your hips to the front of your chair. Leave your ball behind you. We're gonna do some ab slides. So, just sitting tall, tuck the pelvic, uh, pelvis under, lean back, make sure you're keeping tight in this lower abdominal area as you just do a little simple slide back, working in this range where you feel tension at the abdominals. If you want, with that crisscross, you can row as you come up. Or to make it really hard, you could row when you go back. Woo! Then your feet want to pop up off the floor, but don't let them. It's harder when we row going back because we've got more weight on the end of the teeter-totter. Or to speak more scientifically, more weight away from the fulcrum, which in this case is your belly button. Keep that belly button pulling in. Do your best. I'm going to try two more. Oh, last one. Wow, that was a lot of work. Make sure you release the tension on your tube before you take it off. We're not going to use it anymore, so if you want, you can toss it aside, your ball as well. Stay. And get a sip of water. All right, we've been working hard trying to 
Beat the Winter Blues, Fight Cabin Fever. Exercise is so good for that. So please, as much as it's sometimes hard to get motivated to get started, I get it. I do, really I do. It feels better when we've done it, even at a low intensity. Just moving our body improves our mood. And so here's to that. We're gonna do a little bit of standing balance exercise, but it's not aerobic. I'll show you what it looks like in your chair, but it's actually harder in the chair. But, you know, we're gonna to lean to the side and make a long, strong diagonal, pull the navel in, and then we're gonna to try to do a diagonal oblique crunch. So you can do that in your chair, but it's pretty tricky. It's also tricky in the air, because we're gonna be adding an element of balance. To that, make sure your area is free and clear of stuff. Make sure you keep your left hand within a millimeter of your chair. Put your weight in your left leg and stretch your right leg out as far as you can. Notice I'm sinking down into this left leg. Stretch it out, balance here. Now see if you can exhale as you draw that elbow toward the knee. Keep the body in this diagonal, stable position. We could do it with a bent arm and a bent leg. And then maybe just for fun, try it straight. Is that fun? <laughs> well, at least it's effective if it's not fun. But I hope little bits of the class are fun. Let's try to finish off on the other side. Right hand is within a millimeter of the chair. Sink down into your right leg. Stretch your left leg out. As far as you can, remember, if the shoulder aches, shorten the lever. Otherwise, stretch it out and draw the knee closer to the elbow as you balance here. You can put your foot down or grab your chair anytime you like. Do your best. And perhaps finish off with one straight or two. Eey, that was hard. Since we're standing, let's get that calf and hip stretch again. We're slowing down now on purpose. Just as the warm up is really important to your workout because it helps you to do more and do more safely, the cool down is likewise just as important. So walk that left foot back, pace the heel on the ground, lean forward. Ah. Feels good. If you can, shift your weight and bend that left knee a wee bit. Whew. And then we're going to stretch the other leg. Walking the right foot back incrementally to a place where you could keep the heel on the ground and lean forward. Relax and breathe. flexibility at the end is actually one of the most immediately effective parts of our workout. We're lengthening the muscles that we have shortened through repeated contractions or strength work. Now I've bent my rear knee and I'm pushing down into the floor. That's an effective calf stretch because there's two muscles. One's on top and one's underneath. And if your knee is slightly bent to do that calf stretch, you might feel it a little lower, a little bit more on the shin or the outer part of the ankle. Stretching those hips. Well, you know, let's stretch them in our chair. So come on. You don't even have to squat, but you do have to safely get down in your chair. So I recommend making sure your heels are touching the actual chair. We don't use a chair on wheels just <laughs> for that reason that sometimes they scooch away. Good time to step to the side, mindfully brace with your arm and your abdominals and get another sip of water. I have a, this is a 24 ounce container and I've almost drank three quarters of it while we were exercising. It's a good idea to sip water throughout the day 
And if you're not measuring how much water you're taking in, you can always just check the color of your urine, not to be gross or anything, but that's a really good way to, to make sure you're staying hydrated. It doesn't work so good if you've got blue water at your toilet though. <laughs> All right, I hope you giggle a little while we exercise. We're gonna slow our breath down and then we're gonna try to breathe mindfully with our stretches. Let me turn our music down a little bit. So if you want to sit way back in your chair so that your spine's supported, you can just rest your hands in your lap or better yet, take your thumb, place it on the bottom of your ribs and your middle finger near your navel and your other hand near your heart. Think of your lungs as beautiful, flexible, big pink balloons. And we're going to breathe in, ideally through our nose, and to fill them from the bottom to the top, effortlessly. Relax your shoulders down, breathe in, soften your belly, feel it expand. Feel the ribs open in all directions, like a widening circle. Feel the chest rise. As you exhale, feel the chest naturally lower. Ribs stitch closer together. And the belly will press closer to the spine. Do it again. Breathe in at your own pace. You can exhale through your nose or through gently pursed lips like you're blowing out a small candle. And in three to five breaths, with practice, you can bring your heart rate down, your breathing rate down. You could begin to slow your whole body's nervous system and learn by practicing and repeating learn to manage your stress with the three-part breathing and a little mindful clearing of the brain. <laughs> so let's sit forward in our chair and do a hip stretch. I like to call it figure four. So crossing your right ankle over your left, letting the right knee outside of it drift down towards the ground. Or you could, if you're flexible enough and it's easy, you could lay the right ankle on top of the left thigh and as you breathe in relax and expand the abdomen feel the breath open your ribs and rise up to your chest as you exhale you can begin to hinge forward just a little gently coaxing the outside of that knee toward the floor and try it again with your own relaxed energizing inhale and exhale if you like, keep your shoulders where they are, but let the back of the neck lengthen, gently letting the chin tilt in toward the collarbone. Gently, slowly swaying to give your neck a little massage. Sit tall when you're ready. Let's try that on the other hip. So crossing at the ankle, the left hip might be tighter or more flexible than the right. That's okay. Gently coaxing the outer, outside of the left knee down, or it might look like this. We don't want the foot to be on top of the lap to introduce a forced eversion of the ankle. That's probably not ideal. So ankle on the lap, inhale, lengthen your spine, Exhale, keep the length in your torso as you hinge forward, gently guiding the outside of the left knee toward the ground. Feeling this stretch really deeply, but not painful at all, in the hip socket. Deep inhale, lengthening your spine, 
you could feel your abdomen expand towards your lap in this position. Exhale. And if you like, you can again let that just the head bow. You want to keep the head above the level of the heart. And gently, slowly, very careful with the neck. Let the head wag. If it feels good. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Sitting tall. Let's turn to the side for this, mm, you could call it a variation, a seated variation, a pose of the dancer. It's a good stretch for the quadricep and hip flexors. Sitting sideways with the left hip off, let the chair hinge forward to coax and gently ease that leg back and let it just relax and the left knee sink gradually to the floor. As you inhale, feel the lowest part of your lungs, middle, highest part, and stretch. Introducing a gentle arch in your back, if it feels good. If it doesn't, don't do it. You can always bring that arm in. And if you like, exhale and stretch through the left side of your body, hinging at the left elbow, pat yourself on the back. You did a great job moving your body today. Mm, come out of that. Before we get the other side, ease out. Let's get a chest opener and a little airplane so sitting at the front edge of your seat, breathe in as you open your fingers back. Lift your heart, lift your chest, lift your sights, and then gently latch your fingertips on a part of your chair. Be careful to keep all four legs on the ground as you lean forward. Fill your chest once more, and as you exhale, you can let your left ear Drift down to your left shoulder. Inhale, sit tall, lean forward, and then right ear toward right shoulder. Ooh, I love that stretch for the trapezius. And we'll finish off with this right hip flexor, quadricep, side stretch, tricep as well. Take your time. Right hips a little off the front edge of the chair. Right leg eases back. Ease your torso up as you breathe in. Let that right knee sink down like a sack of potatoes. Inhale up. Open the spine. When you're ready, should you like, exhale, stretch through the side of your torso. Allow that right elbow to hinge. Pat yourself on the back. Take a deep, deep cleansing breath. Ah, hey. Another good thing that's happening by the time this, this episode reaches you, there'll be another, uh, very close, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine for the COVID-19 virus is probably going to be near time where it's getting emergency FDA approval. Um, and that'll give us another tool. And what's really great about the Johnson & Johnson is it's one dose and it doesn't need to be refrigerated at very low temperatures so that the rest of the world, hopefully, we, none of us are going to be safe until all of us are safe or the better part of the human race. So keep that in mind. If you've already gotten your vaccination because you're a beautiful ripe age, <laughs> bravo for you, but we are not sure yet whether or not we can be vectors of the, of the disease even after we've gotten vaccinated. So keep on wearing your mask. Keep on doing all those things that we know are right because science tells us and keep it safe and simple. I love you, bye for now. Keep staying strong. And if you need a friend, call me or call each other. All right, bye.